Okay, so for the record, I did double check with my managers just to make sure that talking about this doesn't count as stroke work and crossing the picket line. So, let's talk about Big Brother. Let's talk about a deaf contestant being on Big Brother for the first time. Let's talk about this deaf contestant named Matt who is from California and is a gold medal winning swimmer at the Deaf Olympics. I don't know much about anything about Matt because this is the first time I'm hearing about him and I don't really know anything about Big Brother because I don't really watch reality TV all that much. But this is fascinating. Viewers call out Big Brother for holding a hearing competition with a deaf house guest. Some question if an audio based challenge was a fair competition. I have a story time for you when this is over. <laughs> See, my first thoughts about this right off the bat are, why, why, why? This is giving me war flashbacks to high school when we had to play the telephone game, and I sucked at it every single time because I didn't even have these. Then again, my hearing was better back in high school, but not good enough for this. A hearing-based competition challenge didn't sit well with some Big Brother viewers on Wednesday, considering the involvement of the show's first ever deaf house guest. Well, I'm glad these viewers noticed something was off because my peers at YouTube camp. His name is Matt, a 27 year old from Cameron Park, California, and he's a gold medal winning swimmer at the Death Olympics. He previously won the first Big Brother challenge he competed in this season by kicking himself in the butt a hundred times. What are y'all doing on this show? What, what is this show? I'm very confused. <laughs> Big Brother introduced a multiverse theme for its 25th season, paving the way for Wednesday's veto competition, called Twisted Task, which takes place in a 1990s music store. I'm getting flashbacks to like FYE and stuff. I miss that place. There is one still in Toronto, but I haven't seen them anywhere in the States in so long. In Twisted Task, the six participating house guests were tasked with putting on headphones and listening to records to decipher a series of audio clues that they then had to piece together. Those who could do it in the fastest time were recognized and clots did not finish in the top three. I realize I didn't say his last name the, the first time, but I didn't want to mess it up because hi, I'm also deaf. So we're putting on headphones and listening to records to decipher a series of audio clues. I don't know what Matt's hearing level is like. I don't know how much hearing loss he has, how deaf he is. So that's one thing to take into account. Does he wear hearing aids or not? Does he have a cochlear implant or not? Maybe I should have watched this before I read this, but I don't want to. According to an exclusive with EW that was published earlier in the day, those working behind the scenes on Big Brother took their jobs very seriously when it came to creating a level playing field for clots, both inside the house and out. Okay, so so far it's looking like, you know, the crew didn't just go all willy-nilly in making this challenge, but I'm still finding it weird, but okay, let's keep going. For competitions, adjustments included the addition of a parametric or directional speaker that could be moved around and was tested by clots beforehand. With Twisted Task specifically, producers used a combination of the right tone and voice in his ear and an appropriate set of noise-canceling headphones that would work with his hearing aids without causing feedback. Okay, so he does wear hearing aids. I also would like to know what kind of headphones those are because every over-the-ear, over-the-head headphones that I've tried while having hearing aids on just was not ever comfortable and caused feedback. So my guess is that they took his audiogram and then basically, you know, doing what I would do if I was trying to listen to something. I need the bass to be turned up higher and things need to be deeper. I'm better with deeper pitch sounds, bass, things like that. So that's what I would be doing if I wanted to listen to something that was audio and I had my hearing aids in. But despite all of those efforts, many viewers who were reacting on social media wondered if having a hearing based competition with Klaus involved was all that fair in the first place. And some of the tweets say, taking a hearing impaired person and making them compete in a hearing contest is crazy. Y'all are really sick. Honestly, Big Brother needs to hire new people because how hard is it to not have a hearing competition with a deaf contestant or to have a prompter in the DR for him? I don't know what having a prompter in the DR means. Big Brother, I love you, but why are we doing competitions like this with someone who is hard of hearing? Not fair. Do better. Big Brother has shown their complete unawareness of deafness. It is not just being able to hear the sounds, but also listen and understand. Also, the processing and understanding of sound is not the same as a typical hearing person. You are correct. 
because a lot of the times, even if I'm not having hearing aids in, the residual hearing will pick up, oh, there's sound, but understanding it is a completely different ball game. Wearing hearing aids even, people will be talking, sounds will be made, and that doesn't mean automatically that I'm gonna know what's being said or exactly what that sound is. For example, when I was running the dishwasher last week, I thought there was a dog, I thought my neighbor had a dog that was barking constantly, but it always seemed perfectly in sync and sounding the exact same every time. And then I realized that once I left my apartment, I went out into the hallway. No, that was my dishwasher. It definitely wasn't a dog. So, yeah. Seriously, a competition that is all about hearing? When you have a deaf house guest competing? Come on, big brother, do better. Why would you do anything involving hearing like this with a deaf contestant? Despite an unfavorable outcome during his visit to the 90s, Claude's remained safe from elimination for this week. I don't know what that outcome was. I can guess what the outcome was, but hey, Good for him. And then there's 261 comments under this article, but I know better than to read comments on an article, especially from Yahoo. So once upon a time, back in 2016, I got accepted to a YouTube boot camp type of thing. It was called YouTube Next Up, and we went to New York City, and we basically got to learn about how to make a YouTube channel, which we all knew because we all had channels and learn about equipment, how to better edit, how to better, you know, work with audio, things like that, how to grow our channel. Mine's dead now, but anyway, that's not the point. So we learned about post-production, green screen stuff, and yes, we had an audio class. We had an audio-based class. I was the only deaf person in this boot camp. I think I was the only disabled person in general in this program for this specific time. And my captioner slash sort of ASL interpreter, because he knew some ASL, and one of my teammates that I got along with the most, they were both kind of like, this doesn't really seem like um, this is gonna work out too well. And I had brought it up to the people, to the teachers that were teaching us, uh, our group mentor. I remember the reaction being like, well, you know what, just do the best that you can, and if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. Lo and behold, it, it did not work out. I learned when audio goes hot because I could see it, but as far as like telling the difference between what sounded better and whatever, it didn't work out too well. If the audio on this video isn't the greatest, I don't know what to tell you. So audio has never been a big priority for me because quite frankly, there's no way really for me to make it a priority and really figure things out unless I had an editor, which is completely out of my budget. I do all of this myself. So I don't know what Matt's reaction was to having to do this competition. Clearly he went along with it because there's photos of him in this competition. So I'm curious to anybody watching this, if you've seen it, let me know what his initial reaction was to this. So obviously like behind the scenes of all this, they tried working together to figure out the best solution for him. I don't know what would happen if he were to say, I'm not gonna do this. Like would they kick him out or what? This isn't a high school telephone game and this isn't like a class at boot camp. This is a competition show. So part of me would think that, yeah, if he said that he was going to step out, then it wouldn't be fair if he was safe from elimination and having not been involved in it. That all being said, I'm going to agree with some of the people tweeting, why would you have this competition to begin with? If you knew that a deaf contestant was going to be on this show, these games were probably planned out ahead of time before they got cast members in or, you know, half and half, whatever. But once they knew that the deaf contestant was coming in, they really should have just changed it. Because at the end of the day, even if you have put in all this work to make sure you got the right type of headphones, you tweak the settings to have a specific tone, cadence, whatever, so that it worked to the best of his hearing aids ability or whatever to understand everything that's going on, it still wasn't going to be an evil playing field because the hearing that we have through our hearing aids and our cochlear implants, whatever, still isn't going to be the same as somebody with natural hearing. Take it from me and my experience with me currently being in cahoots with a hearing person and you know, just hanging out with my friends in general, they're gonna be understanding all these things that are being said by people 
yeah, maybe occasionally somebody's going to misunderstand something. Hearing people's hearing is not perfect by any means. Obviously, there are sometimes misunderstandings and, oh, I didn't hear you. But it's significantly better than what this is. This is computerized hearing. This is electronic. It's robotic, for another word, if you will. I mean, my hearing peers and others don't sound like robots, but it's just that's the way for me and others to describe it in comparison to like natural hearing because this is all going through electronics and then going into my brain and being processed in a way that my date and my friends and my peers my co-workers whatever it's just different so yeah if it was me half of me would think that i probably wouldn't take part in this competition at all and another part of me would do this particular game just to be petty and to be like, I don't know what you wanted for me out of this. Which I think is similar to what I was doing at the YouTube camp. I mean, I did try to take it as seriously as I could, but at the end of the day, I was just like, I really don't know what y'all want from me here because it all sounds the same as in, it just sounds like noise and I don't know what I'm supposed to be listening for, looking out for. I just know that the audio is hot because the mic thing on the side went completely red and orange. So yeah, I don't fault viewers for getting upset about saying this. And clearly, if you can make a game as simple as kicking yourself in the butt a hundred times, you could easily replace this competition with something else. Kicking another body part a hundred times, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> what is this show? I don't understand. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the matter. It definitely brought flashbacks to YouTube Next Up Camp. It's not fair to have an audio-based competition game, whatever, when there's a deaf person involved. Seems he's still on the show, so I guess it's not the end of the world. But yeah, go ahead in the comments. Tell me more information about the show. I'm curious. Tell me about Matt because I don't want to watch it, but I'm very curious now because, I don't know, it seems very interesting, but I'm very happy to see more deaf people be in um, reality TV, TV shows like The Circle. I feel like there are other shows that deaf people have been on besides this and The Circle, but I just, my brain is completely blank. If you would like to support the work that I do, I do have a Patreon page where you will get exclusive content to behind the scenes on YouTube, writing, things like that. And you can get so many things for as low as a dollar a month, but obviously the more that you pledge every month, the more stuff that you get. So I'll have that link down below. If you don't want to sign up to a monthly commitment, there is a super thanks down here. It's like YouTube's tip jar, which also helps out tremendously with the YouTube paycheck. And that is also very much appreciated. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. It is Deaf Awareness Month, so we're trying to crank out the deaf-related content, which reminds me if there's something you'd like to know about, you want me to talk about, feel free to leave those requests down below. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I very much appreciate it, and I will see you later.